to another edition of Just Before You Go to Bed, Preparing Souls for Heaven. Thank you for partnering with us and thank you for watching this program. Uh, please feel free to always write us our information you find on the screen. Uh, feel free to send an SMS. Call me if you're free and I will answer your call and I'll pray for you and I'll pray with you. And may God bless you. We've been getting some good testimonies, people being able to sleep. People who couldn't sleep, just finding themselves being able to sleep. God has called me for this purpose and I am enjoying every bit of it. And God bless you. This season we've been looking at the mysteries of Psalm 91. And this is going to be the part three of it. Why is Psalm 91 a mystery? A lot of people have, have always seen Psalm 91 as a prayer. No, Psalm 91 is a covenant statement. A covenant with, between us and God, where God says, well, if you do these things, this is what I'm going to do. If you dwell in my secret place, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you make the, whole most, the most High your habitation, uh, uh, he, 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 he will set his angels charge over you. I mean, there are promises that goes with this covenant. And then the last part is what we want to do because he has set his love upon me. Because he has set his love upon me. And that is Psalm 91 verse 14. I would love to read from verse 14 to verse 16 and, and we'll be able to see how we go. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. This is, this is a covenant promise because we have set our love upon him. God is going to do something. He will set us on, he will deliver us and promote us because we have known his name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Is this a psalm that gives a guarantee of an answer to prayer? But there is a condition to that that is setting our love upon him. He said, and I will deliver him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Uh, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lots of us are praying for long life, but the Bible is telling us here that God will satisfy you with long life. You don't need to cry out for long life. All you need to do is to set your love upon the Lord himself and he will satisfy you with long life. This is a covenant and God is a covenant keeper. He does not break covenants. He said, if you set your love upon him, he will satisfy you with long life. I want to read a little bit from my note. It says Psalm 91 reveals the covenant benefit of those that set their love upon God. Most Christians wonder why they do not enjoy the manifestations of certain promises of God in their lives. The truth is that the covenant in Psalm 91 expects us to set our love upon God. If you look at from verse 14 to 16, we, are, we see clearly the covenant benefit of setting our love of our love on, on, on God alone and not on our parents. You know, most times we prefer to set our love on our parents and not on God. No, God first and our parents can come. We don't set our love on our spouses and children and put God second. No, God comes first. Uh, we don't set our love on our friends. No, God comes first, then we can love them. And the things of the world cannot take the place of loving God. I want to make this very clear that we must set our love on God. You see, the Bible says, if you love me, you keep my command. Jesus himself said it. If you love me, you will keep my command. The question I want to ask is, how many of us really keep the commandment of God? How many of us obey his word and his will? A lot of we Christians will no longer obey the word of God. And yet we expect God to keep to his covenant. God is the great king. We can't tell him what to do. You know, I was talking to some friends today and one of the things we are talking about is the act, the act of waiting on God, the art of patience, the art of patience, and, and we come to understand that Christians these days are no, are no longer patient. 
We want a microwave answer. We want God to do things. We want to twist the hand of God to do things for us. But we have to understand that he's the great king. We don't, kings wait for, we don't wait for, I mean, we, we, we wait for kings. Kings don't wait for people. Our God is the great king, therefore we must wait for him. We must wait for his timing. Number two, I did say that God has programmed things in the universe according to his timing and purpose and plans. Therefore, when we allow ourselves to be patient and go according to his purposes and plan for our lives, then we will enjoy the benefits because it is beautiful at God's timing. But when we through prayers twist the hand of God, calling fire, threatening God. In fact, people are now threatening God in their prayers. <laughs> we now force things out of God's hands, God's hand, and 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 then God, in His mercy, sometimes permits it, and but we bear the consequences of those answered prayers. I talked about uh, with my friends today. We were just talking, and I told them about Hezekiah. God told Hezekiah, "It is time to go home." But Hezekiah resisted and cried, and God gave him another 15 years on earth. But do you know that those 15 years on earth, that 50, extra 15 years on earth was more horrible than ever? He did worse things that his children suffered for. We need to understand that God is the great king. Now, this great king has said, if you set your love upon me, I will deliver you, I will give you long life, I will honor you. So, if we want these things from God, we see, mathematically simple, we just set our love upon Him. That is it, simple. How do you set your love upon God? It's clear, just obey His word. Obey what the word of God says. Do the things God asks you to do, but remember, if you have the Holy Ghost, He helps you to do those things with ease, without struggle, in the name of Jesus. If you look at verse 14, the first promise of the covenant is because he has set his love upon me, which is the covenant, therefore I will deliver him. Deliverance comes from God and not from man. If you're waiting for man to bring deliverance your way, you are wasting your time. It's not going to come. Deliverance comes from God alone. I hear people say they are going for deliverance. Deliverance is preached. It's the word of God that brings deliverance. Men can help you by teaching you the word of God, but nobody can bring the word of God by kicking you or spinning you around. Nobody can deliver you by spinning you around. Spinning you around and fall on the ground does not bring deliverance. No, what brings deliverance is the word of God. Then the word of God can shake the demonic forces and they can go out violently. Then you can fall on the ground. Then it's possible. The word of God can, in bringing something new to you can bring you to the floor. Anything can happen, but we must understand that the main deliverance is the word of God. He said, he has set his love upon me. Who is he that sets his love upon God? They are those that operate on the word of God. They are those that operate according to the word of God. They are those that operate according to the word of God. The word of God is the commandment of God. If you love me, you will keep my command. If you love me, you will keep my command. And the moment you keep his command, God will deliver you. He will deliver you from the snares of the wicked one. He will deliver you from your friends. He will deliver you from those that you trust that are planning evils against, evil against you. Brothers and sisters, I have learned that the most dangerous people are those that are very close to you. You don't know their heart because you trust them. But God knows their heart. And God alone can frustrate them and make sure you do not fall into their trap. Brothers and sisters, God will deliver you, but there is a condition for this deliverance for Christians. That condition is to set your love upon the Lord himself. Number two, God will promote you because you know his name and have set your love on him. Those that love God will always receive promotion over their enemies. The Bible says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity, God has promoted you above your equal. The easiest way to receive promotion in life is to set your love upon God. 
God will promote you in such a way that your enemies cannot understand why you're being promoted. They will do all the hard work, but God will see that you're promoted. When they're envious of you, you don't have to be, uh, to be afraid because God will deliver you from their envy. A man that loves God must walk with his head high. You must walk with confidence because there is nothing Satan can do if you love the Lord. All Satan can do is to try to make you hate the Lord by bringing certain things your way that will make you question the Lord our God. God will promote you. Let me read it again. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. I will set him on high. It's promotion. God is going to promote you. God is going to lift you up. You know, this year, 2015, is a year of lifting up. How can I speak to somebody's prophetic word? Here today, 2015 is a year of lifting up. If you're not a born again Christian, this is a year of opportunity for you to be lifted away from sin into righteousness. If you're a Christian, this is a year for God to lift you above your equals in the name of Jesus. Now look at, let's go a bit forward. He says, uh, uh, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Whenever you call upon God, God will answer you. Why is he going to answer you? Because you have fulfilled the condition of the covenant. You see, some people say, well, there are times God don't answer. Look, if you set your love upon the Lord, he will answer you at all time. God will answer you. Now, but remember, he said, he call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Now, let me finish the first one. He will call upon me and I will answer him. But do you know the answer of God could be yes? It could be no? It could be wait. But everybody expects the answer of God to be yes. Sometimes God will say, no, I don't want you to discuss this with me anymore. I remember when Paul was crying to the Lord about, about the thorn in his flesh. The Lord said, no, Paul, you don't understand. This is a mystery you can't follow. Don't let us not discuss this anymore. That thorn in your flesh is going to remain. Because it's a mystery that you need to fulfill your destiny. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for this day and this time. Now, I want to make it very clear that when you call upon the Lord, he will answer you as far as you are in the secret place of the Most High. God will answer you as far as you set your love upon him. Then he said, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. If you have made the Lord your, 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 your if you set your love upon the Lord, the Lord will see it that he keeps to his word. And that word, he says, I will be with him in trouble. What does this mean? It means that you can always, you could find yourself in trouble. But when you're in that trouble, God will be with you. When you're in that trouble, God will be with you. When you pass through the water, he'll be with you. When you pass through the fire, he'll be with you. Wherever you are, God is going to be with you. And as far as God is with us, who can be against us? When God is with you, nothing will prevail against you. He said, I will be with him in trouble. Now, history has told us of men that were with God. And men that loved God. And God was with them in their trouble. I can cite out cases to you. Just as he was with Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was put in the lion den. That was a day of trouble for Daniel. As Daniel was in the lion den, the Lord himself made sure he was there. And because he was there, the lions couldn't eat him. Now to tell you that the lions were very hungry. When the enemies of Daniel were substituted for Daniel and thrown into the pit, the Bible says before they touched the ground, the lions had dealt with them. <laughs> it means those lions were really hungry. But they couldn't touch Daniel. I declare that everything that is hungry for destruction will not be able to touch you because God is going to be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. I say amen for you in Jesus' name. Now, we have the three boys uh, who were in Babylon, the three Jewish boys, Meshach, Abednego, and Co. They were there. And when the day of trouble came, 
they were thrown into the fire because their love was on the Lord. They refused to serve another God. They refused to bow to a demonic God. The king was so furious, the king threw them into, the, into, into, into a burning fire. There were three of them, but the king himself confessed with his mouth. Were there not three men thrown into the fire? Now I see the, a fourth person like the son of, of, of God. Now what was he trying to say? He was trying to say there was a fourth person. God opened the eyes of the king in the spirit to say, Look, these guys you threw in the fire are my children. They love me. Therefore, I will not let them perish. I was with them. I, was, I am with them. God said, I am with them. God was with them in the fire. God is going to be with you in any fire you're going through this season in the name of Jesus. You will not be alone. I want to prophesy to you that if you set your love on God, that every, every trouble you're going through this season, God is going to be with you in that trouble. I remember John the, uh, I mean John the Beloved, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. All attempt to kill him was not possible because one, it was not his time. Number two, it was not possible to kill him because he was called the Beloved. He loved the Lord so much that the Bible called him John the Beloved. Praise the Lord. David in his fight against Goliath, David was delivered from Goliath in the time of trouble. Why? Because David was a man after God's heart. David loved the Lord. I want to tell you that the easiest way to get out of trouble is to love the Lord. He said, I will be with you in trouble. And not just be with you in trouble, he will deliver you from that trouble. He said, I'll be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and I will honor him. If you check all these cases that are called, God was with them. Daniel, God was with Daniel in, 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 the, lion's den, in the lion's den. He delivered him from the lion's den and he promoted him after the deliverance. The three young men, Meshach, Abednego, and Co., Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, these three young men, they were in the fire. God was with them in the fire and they came out and they were promoted above all. David went through trouble with Goliath. He fought Goliath. God was with him in that battle. God delivered him and he was promoted after the battle. I want to tell you today that the trouble you are going through today, once you have set your love upon the Lord himself, that in the name of Jesus, God is with you in that trouble. He will deliver you and after this trouble, he will promote you. You might be going through your trouble in your office today or your place of work, your school or wherever. I want to prophesy to you today in the name of Jesus that God is with you in that trouble because you have set your love upon him. And not only that, God will deliver you from that trouble. It is not going to swallow you. And at the end of the day, you are going to be set free and you're going to be honored and promoted in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And now, I want to tell you a mystery. To crown it all, God will satisfy you with long life. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me look at this. Let me look at verse 16. Oh my God, this, everybody wants long life. Who doesn't want long life? You want long life. I want long life. You want to go to bed this night and you want to wake up tomorrow. And you want to continue to go to bed and continue to wake up to your very, very old. Is it, is it that not what you want? That is what you want. And that is what God is going to give you today. If you do exactly what you're meant to do in the name of Jesus. And what are you meant to do? Set your love upon him. Praise God. He says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, show him my salvation simply means that you are making heaven. You are making heaven. God is going to satisfy you with long life. At the end of the day, you will meet eternal salvation, which is heaven. I want to tell you that this covenant of Psalm 91 is loaded with promises. Because he set his love upon me. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him. I want to assure you today that, to, 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 that God will satisfy you with long life. Every plan of the wicked to kill you will fail this night in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is just to set your love upon the Lord. But how can you love God when you have not loved your neighbor? How can you love God when you have not given your life to Jesus? 
Therefore, my brother, my sister, whoever you are that's watching this program today, even if you hate me, the story I want to tell you today is simple. Set your love upon God. But how can you love God except you first accept Jesus Christ? For Jesus Christ is the love of God made manifest on earth. Can a man love God without Jesus? It is impossible. Jesus himself is the love of God. Accept him today and enjoy eternal life. He said, if you look at verse, Psalm 9, verse 10, I want us to look at verse, Psalm 9, verse 10. Psalm, Psalm 9, verse 10. He said, they that, know, that, they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. They that know thy name, these are they that love the Lord our God. I want to beg you this day that the only way you can love God, how can you love God that you have not seen? But, how can you, but the only way to do it is to agree with his word. Blessed are those that have not seen but they believe. You can love him by accepting Jesus Christ into your life. If you accept Jesus Christ, it's to say that you have decided to love God because the commandment, the commandment of God is that we should be saved through his son, Jesus Christ. And when you accept him, you've obeyed him, it means you love him. If you love the son, you love the father. For that is what the Bible has told us. God will not forsake you today. I want to introduce this Jesus to you. If you can just set your love upon him, you, then you have set your love upon God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I want to introduce him to you now. If you have not accepted Jesus, I want you to stretch forth your hands today and accept him. Just lift up your lift out, stretch forth your hand and say, Jesus, repeat after me, say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. Wash me from my sins and accept me into your kingdom today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father, for accepting me and writing my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. You're welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus. Today we have made an analysis of, of the mysteries of Psalm, of Psalm 91. First we say that Psalm 91 is filled with three major covenants. The first covenant is that... Uh, that if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, then we'll, dwell, then we'll abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So the covenant is, hey, sleep, dwell in my secret place and other things I'm going to do. The second is because that has made the Most High the habitation. If you make the Most High the habitation, there are so many promises that will come your way according to that word. And then the last one is because he has set his love upon me. If you set your love upon the Lord, that is what we talked about today. God will deliver you. He will be with you in trouble. He will promote you and he will, uh, he, will, he will bless you with long life. He will satisfy you with long life in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for somebody that thinks you're going to die this night. Uh, it's, 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 it's not an accident you're watching this program. You're, you have this belief you're going to die. The doctors have told you you're going to die. But I want to tell you that God is telling me that there is somebody watching this program that people believe you're going to die this night. You're not going to die. I declare it. You're not going to die this night. God has told me to tell you you're not going to die. I want to rebook every sicknesses around anybody watching this program. Now, I re sickness, I rebook you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I see somebody that is lame. You're lame. You're lame. You're sitting. You're, you're lame. You can't walk. God is asking you to stand up. He said somebody by, by, by that person, lift this person by the hand and let that person stand. Yes, receive strength. Yes, Lord. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. Receive strength on your leg in the name of Jesus. You, 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 you can. Yes, you can. Yes. Hold the hands. Hold the hands. Help this person. Lift this person up. Yes, you can walk. Yes. Begin to walk now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. What a miracle. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. From, the, from, from this television station here, I can see what is happening. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this thing happening in this home in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I, I bless you for such thing you do with men. Lord, I bless you for, for oh, my Father, I, I give you praise. Take the honor and the glory in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Please feel free to send me your prayer request. Call, uh, send an email, send whatever you need to send, email, prayer request. Call on phone, we will answer you. We have a team on standby ready to answer you, ready to pray for you. If you get me on the phone, I'm going to pray for you. And may God bless you. And please, I want to encourage you that whenever we are in your country or wherever you are and we are doing Solution Hour, this is a program we take around the nations. Please feel free to attend Solution Hour and experience the power of God. If you go to solutionhour.org, you will see our website. And then if you just Google Solution Hour by Pastor Mike Wanneba, you can watch other things we do in Solution Hour. And then you can also go to harvestofnationsmandate.org and you can see the past Solution Hour, I mean the past uh, uh, television programs so just before you go to bed. You can just go on the internet or just type in my name or type just before you go to bed by Pastor Mike Wanneba and you will see all the past episodes listing and get blessed and may god bless you abundantly in jesus name we pray i hope you enjoyed this edition of just before you go to bed it's a vision god has given to me with a direct instruction prepare my saints for heaven as they go to bed prepare them and i just speak the word of god into your lives i've been receiving lots of great testimonies god has been doing great and wonderful things i just want you to support this program in whichever way you want to support it and apart from that, please, I want you to send us your testimonies because testimonies are powerful tools. As we share your testimonies, it changes lives. Please, just give us your testimonies. Please, you can also visit our website on www.harvestofnationsmandate.org Reaching the nations for the world. I, I, just, I just want to invite you to continue to watch this program. Invite people to this program. Share the idea of this program to people. And God will make your life beautiful again. It will never be the same in Jesus' name. May God bless you as I cover your dream state with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Just before you go to bed. Amen. So many are oppressed at night. Now the word of God will arise like fire and hammer to stand in your defense to give you a good night's sleep. Things that you're carrying, the guilt of the sins you're carrying, just give them over to me. For this understanding, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. While you're studying the word, that your deliverance could just come. God could just give you solutions to the problem. God has given Pastor Mike the mandate to speak his word into the lives of people to prepare them for bed just before you go to bed. Jesus is Lord and heaven is our destination. Watch it here on BAM Television. Watch before you go to bed. God bless you for watching. We hope this program has blessed you. If you've been touched and have a testimony, please let us hear from you. Have a good night's sleep and God bless you.